and I am so blessed to be with you this morning. And today, we are going to continue, or I should say, resume our series, because it's been a couple of weeks, based on the book that Matt Kahn wrote, The Universe Always Has a Plan, The Ten Golden Rules of Letting Go. And today we are going to be exploring golden rule number six. So when Matt Kahn was in kindergarten, he remembers being asked to draw a picture of what he wanted to be when he grew up. And he drew a picture of a garbage man. And when there was back to school night, when his parents came, his parents and his teacher called him over and said, hey, Matthew, why do you want to be a garbage man? And with the simplicity and the innocence of a kindergarten child, he said, because they only work on Friday. And with that, his mom said, no, Matthew, they only work on Friday on our block but on other days they are working but they're just not in our area and with that he looked up with all his innocence he says okay i don't want to be a garbage man can i go play now and with that he ran off back to his friends but he remembers distinctively being asked that question again when he was in the sixth grade and this time it was a share during class during a English discussion and they were going around the room and when they came to Matt with all clarity and confidence, he said, I'm going to live in Seattle, Washington, and I am going to be writing best selling books. And for the last 13 years, lo and behold, guess what Matt Kahn is doing. He's living in Seattle, Washington, and he is writing. He's written about three or four best selling books. If you can remember being asked as a child, what do you want to be when you grow up? Raise your hand. And if you're in Zoom, you could raise your hand. And if there's anybody in Zoom that's raising their hand, you could just give a shout out. Yes, right? Here's the second part of that question. How many of you did or are still doing what you said you wanted to be when you grew up? So I see a couple of hands here. Maybe there are some on Zoom. So when I was about eight or nine years old, I said I wanted to be a teacher. And that really pretty much stayed with me into adolescence, into college, where, and so on. And so as I would keep steadfast with saying, yeah, I want to be a teacher, my dad would tease me. Are you sure you want to be a teacher? You know, you would make a good reporter because you always ask so many questions. <laughs> or he would say, Ange, are you really sure you want to be a teacher? Because I think lawyers make more money and you always have to have the last word. <laughs> Oh, I miss that man so much. I really do. But nevertheless, it persisted. But what I didn't realize when I was eight or nine years old and actually into adolescence and in early adulthood, that that desire to be a teacher was more than my desire to have a career or a role in life. What it really was fueled by was my soul's passion to want to be a supportive presence and to empower others. And now as my role as a minister, not only do I quote unquote preach, but I've been known to teach. <laughs> Can't take it out of me. And not only does that desire to empower and support people through the vehicle of teaching and other ways show up, it sh showed up in the classroom, it shows up here at the pulpit, 
it also shows up in me, you know, wherever I am. And I can distinctly remember coming home from Unity Village and being at the airport Starbucks. And the gentleman in front of me was trying to use his Starbucks app to pay for his coffee. And he couldn't figure out how, it, how he could use it. And so the barista was getting impatient with him and she was sighing, rolling her, you know, rolling her eyes. And then finally he says, okay, 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 here, he paid her with cash. And after I got done paying for my coffee, I walked over to him and I'm saying, excuse me, couldn't help but over here that you didn't know how to use the app. Would you like me to teach you? <laughs> so he says, yeah, I said, if you have time. And he says, yeah, that would, that would be great. So, and then he just stopped and he says, you know what, even though I really want to learn how to use this thing, I just want to tell you, like, I'm really touched by you taking the time to care because everybody's always in such a hurry. So that desire to be of service, to empower others, happens to come out through the archetype type of the teacher that I carry. And I know that there are others that I carry with this lifetime. And that desire is imprinted in my soul and is always guiding me in creative ways on how to express that in this world. And not only does my soul carry an imprint of my deepest desires, my passions, archetypes, whatever you may believe of patterns, but your soul carries that for you as well. Which brings us to today's golden rule, number six. Golden rule number six states that the universe always has a plan. The universe always has a plan. Sometimes maybe we've heard it stated like God always has a plan. And if we look literally at face value, at this phrase, the sentence, it means that some deity out there or some universal force out there is in charge of my life and is directing my moves. And it, and it also instills within us that passivity of our part in this world. Sometimes we may hear ourselves saying, well, I'm not quite not sure, but I wonder what God's plan is for me. Well, guess what? Those plans, those divine God plans are buried deep within your soul. And you are not a passive participant. You are one that co-creates your experience. So deep within your soul and my soul is that knowing. So if we take that phrase, the universe always has a plan and we look to the metaphysical meaning of that, we will find that the universal plan for your soul, my soul, our souls, is to awaken in consciousness to the fullness of our potential. You may hear the Christ potential, the Buddha potential, enlightenment, those are all ways of saying the same thing and to uniquely live from our divine nature. So we all have the same basic soul plan to wake up, right? To follow the guidance of our inner wisdom. And the unique part comes in how we express our divine nature. More about that later. And as synchronicity would have it, I want to read an excerpt of today's daily word. And it states this, my unique purpose is not given to me, it is something I discern for myself over the course of my life. I have discovered what I have affinity for is how I kindle my passion, focus my attention and feel the most alive. My passions are clues to my purpose to which I passionately devote my time and my life. So 
Charles Fillmore and Myrtle Fillmore and many of the Unity um, teachers throughout the days and up to now really haven't spent too much time focusing on the preparation of soul, the plan of the soul before we incarnate into this life. And that could be a whole several weeks of a series. So I'm just gonna dabble in it as it relates to the universe has the plan. So if we look here at the daily word, it says that we are discovering it over this lifetime, our purpose, right? But many new mystical teachers of the day, such as Matt Kahn, Carolyn Mace, Neil Donald Walsh, and others state that before incarnation, each one of us, with the support of ascended guides, choose soul lessons and archetypal patterns, you know, unique gifts that we're going to choose, and we choose them as our soul plan, not only for the evolution of us waking up, but in service to the waking up of the whole of creation, of each other. You know, much of our life, we're taught in this physical world that we're so separate, you know, my job, my career, and we don't even realize the impact that it's not really about a career. It's again, each one of us waking up to that sole purpose. And as we incarnate that plan, the universal plan, our soul plan that we participated in is imprinted deep within our souls. And throughout our lives, it's trying to call us, call us, awaken us, and it depends on if we are listening. But here is the good news, it will keep calling to you. <laughs> So no worries there. <laughs> Sometimes the call may come by a what they call the universal two by four. <laughs> In any event, <laughs> you will eventually say, okay, okay, maybe I'm trying to, to learn something here and be brought back to what is mine to do. And so instead of looking outside of ourselves, which often we do, right? What am I gonna be when I grow up? What's the plan? We might look to the job market. We may look to um, which quote unquote career makes more money. Um, you know, what others say, so on and so on. Instead of always realizing, you know, we may know intellectually, like I think all of us know this, right? Many of us know this, that Deep within us is exact guidance, right? And then it's and it's sometimes we do so many things that block it out. So I'm going to talk about four keys today. They're not the only keys to awakening to your soul's plan. However, we spend a lot of time, you know, in previous um, classes, Sunday talks, talking about the importance of being mindful, being present in every moment, culting cultivating a relationship with your own soul, spending time in the stillness, prayer and meditation. Those are always important. And I'd like to focus on four other keys today. So always, that is always part of your unlocking your soul's plan. And so the first one, I just want to remind you, everyone has the same overall purpose. And what is that? To awaken in consciousness to our fullest potential, whether it's the Christ potential, Buddha potential, so on and so on, and to uniquely use our gifts, our divine nature in unique ways to serve others. And each one of us, even though we have that overarching goal, each one of us, we come in with a unique plan, a unique path, patterns and gifts. We may come in and have decided before we incarnate it that we want to work on deepening faith or prosperity or an understanding 
personal power in what it means. And guess what? We're going to give lessons so that we can learn it. <laughs> so those are some of those overall arching things that we may have agreed to. And we agree to certain archetypes. Not only did I talk about uh, me being called to empower others through teachers, archetype of healing, and so on and so on. And there are other things that we will call forth in our lives, which is part of the patterns and the gifts that we are agreeing to bring in. And that is the unique part that comes in here for our soul. Also, I'm gonna just take a pause. I know Gail Hammond would be so excited right now because she loved this stuff. <laughs> so Gail, I feel your presence. <laughs> and here's the other key is, each one of us will fulfill our soul purpose, to awaken to our highest potential and, use our, and learn how to use our unique divine gifts. Every one of us is guaranteed that that will happen. The question becomes, how many lifetimes will it take? And so some of us may take that big deep sigh and guess what? It brings us to looking at our concept of time. Great old time, right? So here's the deal, humankind invented the concept of time. And many of us will find ourselves believing we don't have enough time. Something is taking too much time. Um, the biological clock is ticking. If I don't have a baby now, or if I don't get the job now, my son who is 31 years old, who is looking for his perfect purpose, and we're all all right, is like, time is ticking it you know it's going to be too late for me mom and i'm like no it's never going to be too late for you honey but you know you can't convince somebody of that right so we're we have this relationship with time that is kind of sometimes ag agnostic right and we fail to realize that time we that time is really again something we made up it's infinite but we believe it's finite so if we look to charles fillmore and matt Kahn, we can see this reflected in humankind's um making stuff up about time okay so according to charles fillmore time is the measure that humankind gives to passing events from the spiritual viewpoint there is no such thing as time in the way that humankind has come to regard it. Centered in spiritual consciousness, a thousand years are as one day, and one day is as a thousand years. That's easier said to believe that than done, right? How many of you say, oh, your vacation just flew by like that, right? But when you're going through something tough, in your life, it feels like a lifetime, does it not? And then here, the wisdom of Matthew Kahn, we hear these words. When lost in time, you often have the dilemma of everything you want seeming so far away, while you're unable to get away from the things you don't want to experience. The ego often wonders, why do I get more time with the things I don't want and so little time with the things I do want? It is through the gift of time that you are able to measure how much or how little ego remains in the driver's seat of your life by how often disharmony arises in your experience. So instead of beating ourselves up about time, about the disharmony we experience, oh, I thought I learned that lesson before. Oh, I'm revisiting this again. Will I ever get it? It's like, thank you, universe. I feel like I'm being, what's his name? Um, Jimmy Fallon, <laughs> thank you letters. <laughs> thank you, universe. <laughs> Thank you, universe, for showing me 
that, that this disharmony I'm feeling, this conflict with time I am experiencing is showing me where my soul is calling me home, calling me to the universal plan to for me to awaken. And so a rather asking, how can I get more time? Or looking to change the external situations of our lives to get more time. And I'm not saying that we may not be called to do that. I'm gonna invite you to reflect on two things. First, how is this conflict with time trying to, which I just kind of paraphrased before, call me home to my soul's purpose, to awaken me in consciousness to my fullest potential, to uniquely live for my divine nature. Spend time resting in your soul, in prayer, in meditation, before you try to ex change the external world. That may come, we start right here in this reflection. And then the other reflection I invite you into is perhaps the reason I don't have what I desire is because I am developing the worthiness to handle having it. I'm going to say that again. Perhaps the reason I don't have what I desire is because I'm developing the worthiness to handle having it. Meaning, guess who's in charge of the driver's seat? If I am in unworthiness, my soul is not in charge, but my personality self, my domesticated self, my ego, all ways of saying the conditioned self. So if I am in ego, my highest desire may not be in my experience. And we can take out the word worthiness and fill it out, fill it in with many different things. Perhaps the reason I don't have what I desire is because I'm developing the understanding to handle having it, the wisdom, the strength, the courage, the capacity to love and be loved, to emotionally and spiritually mature. So how many of you know, like we say, thoughts held in mind, produce more of the same kind, right? It's the law of attraction. And sometimes we're like, oh, that doesn't work. So we may take a deep breath and say, okay, soul, where must I prepare myself? Where am I allowing the ego to be in charge so that I may embody my deepest desires? And then after reflecting on these two things, what is this relationship with time trying to show me? And perhaps the reason that I don't have it is because what is it I'm trying to, to develop? Then we can seal it off with mantra six, which is another thank you letter. <laughs> thank you universe for this time to prepare as I open to being more worthy or whatever word you want to put in there to receive. Thank you for the gift of time. And you can put in there instead of universe. Thank you, divine soul, for this time to prepare as I open to become a more worthy receiver. Thank you for the gift of time. I want you to think about either something recent where you wrestled with time or where you might have been holding a desire in prayer and in meditation and kind of not seeing that manifest in your life. I want you to call that up right now. I want you to drop to your heart. And as we come to a close, I would like you to close your eyes. As you breathe, oh, so lovingly, so passionately into your heart. Hmm. As you hear these words, thank you, universe, 
for this time to prepare as I open to being a more worthy, loving, wise, understanding, faithful, generous, powerful receiver. Thank you for the gift of time. Oh, I am preparing to receive at a higher level by cultivating the maturity and the worthiness to have what I want without slowing or stalling the trajectory of my ever growing evolution and expansion. My soul is leading me to fulfill the desires of my heart, but in a way that complements and continues my rate of evolution and expansion. True healing isn't always a matter of getting what I want, but receiving all that I need to help me transform at my most optimal capacity. By being at certain levels of consciousness for specific periods of time, I am building up the necessary pressure to inspire the growth and expansion needed to guide me along to my next highest level of consciousness. And oh, oh beloved soul, I will embrace all experience with gratitude knowing that I am awakening in consciousness to the fullest potential and that I am here to serve others. And so it is, and so it shall be. Amen. Blessings, my dear Juan. I hope you have a wonderful day, a beautiful week, and may you make peace with time and be in love with the plan for your soul. Blessings. Thank you, Angela. What a concept time is our friend. <laughs> Oops. So, thank you. Thank you, Angela. Uh, time is not the enemy. Time is our friends. It is for us and not against us. So our affirmation this morning, and if you'd like to read aloud along with me, I invite you to do so. The universal purpose of my divine soul is to awaken me in consciousness to my fullest potential and to guide me in using my innate gifts in service to the whole of creation with humility power and joy mm. is now that very special time in our service where we have the opportunity to share our financial blessings with this wonderful beloved community.